guys. Greetings. Mark Boswell, Boswell Works in Medical Education. Um, on the road again today, and so I'm killing some time doing a little uh, video discussion. Uh, what this one's going to be about, I want to go back to practice question 632 that was on the Facebook page recently, uh, probably about three or four days ago, and I want to talk about that question and explain it a little bit to you. Um, I think there's some good information in that question, the way I wrote it, and the learning points that I want to get across to you guys, which not only from knowing the pathophysiology or some concepts of it about CHF, but also um, some things that are important as far as how to pick the right answer and not just always, I'm sorry, how to pick the best answer, but not always the right answer. All right, so um, a little bit louder in the truck today, so this video is not that great. Um, I did get a new um, exhaust system installed uh, about a month ago, so you may hear that a bit more in the background. I'm going to try and consciously talk a little bit louder, and you see the U-Haul behind me, so I'm making the move or at least taking some stuff down to Florida. Uh, we relocate here pretty soon. Okay, so practice question 632. Um, I just took some notes here so I can glance at them during the video. Just to remind you, I'm gonna give you this scenario again. So this is a patient, uh, did not give an age, but the patient's been having progressive dyspnea on exertion, three to four pillow orthopnea, a 10 pound weight gain in the last week, okay? so. He, we don't, I don't specifically tell you he's having shortness of breath or chest pain, but you can probably figure there's something to do with cardiorespiratory with this, with the dyspnea, the orthopnea, and some of that weight gain too, that fluid retention, okay? Vital signs, respirations are 26, so a little tacky. Heart rate's 108, that's also a bit tacky. Blood pressure, 210 over 124. So this guy's got some hypertension situation going on here. Uh, O2 saturation room air is 91%, and the patient is afebrile. So, I give you this patient's scenario, some symptoms of dyspnea, some increased work of breathing, um, vital signs, not too bad except for that blood pressure. And the question is, what drug would you expect an order for? Okay, well, so how are we gonna tackle, and I'll, I'll give you the answers. The, the choices were either A, nitride, B, nitroglycerin, C, low pressor, or D, Lasix. Just to go ahead and give you the right answer, the right answer was D, Lasix to start diuresing this patient and decreasing his preload. Now let's go back into how we're gonna handle this question, okay? So the question asks you, for what drug would you expect to see order? Okay? This is an example of which is the right, uh, which is the best answer, because there may be more than one right answer, okay? Now, looking generally those three answers, nitride, nitro, low pressor, you're gonna lump those three into a type of antihypertensive. And your brain is going to look at that and go, okay, there's three in a hypertensive there. It's probably one of those three. And yeah, the guy's blood pressure is up and that can warrant some reduction. But let's look at what his problem actually is. Is it likely, now if you haven't already figured out, the patient's having a CHF exacerbation, okay? The blood pressure being up, is it likely the blood pressure is putting him into CHF acutely? Or is it likely the blood pressure is part of the body's response? to the CHF in this underlying disease state. Now, that being said, hypertension is the number one cause, number one chronic cause of congestive heart failure. So that means people have had high blood pressure for years, maybe even undiagnosed, wind up wearing out the left side of their heart, causing pump failure and decreased ejection, and they have congestive heart failure then. So we don't really know from this scenario if this patient's blood pressure is the actual problem today or it's just part of their underlying condition, okay? Um, now, if I give you some uh, chest pain as part of the scenario, then we might go with that, but I didn't. Specifically, I gave you some typical CHF symptoms, and I gave you at least three of them. The weight gain, the orthopnea, the dyspnea on exertion, and I gave you a vital sign with a pulse ox sign on the low side of 91%. So, this patient's in CHF, so what do we need to give this patient? The way to get the best answer you're going to say, well, I can reduce his blood pressure. That may help some with my pride. Sure, it may. But that's not treating the actual acute, urgent problem he's having. Nitroglycerin, again, would probably help, but it's not treating the acute, urgent problem. The low pressure would bring down his heart rate some, would bring down his blood pressure some. So might have a role somewhat, but I'm going to tell you this also. Always remember with your, your beta your beta blockers, your beta-1 antagonists, the toprolol, low pressor, are probably the biggest ones out there. Always be a little cautious that you might trigger a respiratory worsening 
because it, uh, the beta-1 drug may kind of overlap and go to the beta-2 cells on the lungs also and cause a little trigger effect with that, okay? Now, this is most often seen in our COPD patients, not so much our CHF patients, but that being said, I kind of want to move away from the low pressure for this patient, even if it was the right answer, because of that potential for a respiratory response. And that respiratory response, um, if some of these people get uh, a side effect of the beta blockers, it would be like cough, wheezing, tightness in the chest, or worsening shortness of breath. So anytime someone has some potential for respiratory, low pressure, the toprolol, the beta blockers are not really the ideal drug you want to use, unfortunately. So we still have the nitride on the table. We still have the nitroglycerin on the table. And let's talk about the Lasix. Now, we, you know we give Lasix for CHF. You know it doesn't work immediately. But here's the thing about Lasix. Lasix is a preload reducer. This patient in acute CHF has a preload problem. So the best answer for this question is to pick the drug that answers their, their primary problem most directly and specifically. So in a patient with a preload surplus, a preload problem, this patient CHF has too much preload, meaning too much fluid, you've got to pick a preload reducer first, or one that's most specific to reduce preload. My pride is an antihypertensive. It works on afterload. That would be for our patients in a hypertensive crisis. That would be their first drug of choice. Nitroglycerin has preload and afterload reducing capacities. That's why you see it used in CHF sometimes. But it's not going to be your primary first line drug. We're going to do the Lasix first because it's preload specific. Additionally, further on to this patient's care, we may look at things like nitroglycerin, which again would benefit because it's preload and afterload reducing, or maybe something like nitride or some other antihypertensive to work on the blood pressure. The blood pressure is, is systolic 210, diastolic 124. That is more really a symptom than the cause of this problem. And this is a test question type scenario where there may be more than one right answer, but there could be one best answer. And this is your rule for, this is your tip, tip for test taking. The, the right answer would be the one that always treats the most specific problem or the most specific etiology directly and foremost. CHF is a preload problem. There's too much preload. I need to give a preload reducer. Our typical three um, preload reducers are Lasix, Morphine, and Nitro. And yes, Nitro is on that list too, but Nitro works on both sides. So Lasix is the most specific. That's what you're going to give first. You also know that Lasix doesn't work immediately. It's going to take a little bit of time, 15 to 30 minutes private. So it's not really going to save someone from the clutches of death, but we need to get it going sooner rather than later to be most effective. And that Lasix, of course, is a loop diuretic, works in the renal tubules to help encourage or enhance fluid, um, fluid excretion, which takes it out of the circulating volume, and that's how it reduces preload. It reduces the circulating volume, reducing the preload. The CHF patient has a preload problem. Lasix also gives you a bit of venodilation. And remember, preload is typically is associated with your venous system more than your arterial system. So you'd like a venodilator for a person with preload problem because it's going to open up that uh, venous side, which is where that fluid's accumulating. Okay. So again, the correct answer, Lasix would be the drug you'd expect first. You may see the provider order something else after that to more address the blood pressure, but the Lasix would be first because it's preload specific. So that's an example of how to pick the best answer when there's more than one right answer. So I hope that helps. I hope you learned something. Um, feel free to comment below any questions about the video. Uh, of course, you know, like and share it with your friends or whatever. And um, thanks for letting me be a part of your day. And I will talk to you guys again soon. Be safe and uh, hit me up on Facebook. All right? Peace.